assalamu alaikum welcome to my youtube channel today i am going to discuss transport of carbon dioxide we have discussed in great detail that oxygen is transported by binding to hemoglobin but carbon dioxide is transported in several forms carbon dioxide is produced in the tissues of the body as a result of metabolic process and these tissues continuously utilize oxygen and produce carbon dioxide so the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in tissues is higher than the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood arriving in the capillaries those capillaries that surround the tissues of the body so carbon dioxide diffuses down a concentration gradient from tissues into the blood that is from higher partial pressure to lower partial pressure when the blood leaves the tissues partial pressure of carbon dioxide has ri risen from 40 mm of mercury to approximately 46 mm of mercury it means that the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide in tissues was 46 mm of mercury while that of carbon dioxide in the uh, blood was 40 mm of mercury but as the blood passed over the tissues the carbon dioxide diffused from 46 mm of mercury to 40 mm of mercury and this process continued until the uh, concentration of or partial pressure of carbon dioxide equalized on both sides uh, equalized and uh, uh, that of uh, sorry not equalized but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increased to 46 mm of mercury and that of the uh, tissue fluid uh, reduced to 40 mm of mercury in this way carbon dioxide is transported from tissues to the blood transport of carbon dioxide can't be done in gaseous form rather it is dissolved in blood plasma even though carbon dioxide dissolves more efficiently than oxygen in plasma but all of the carbon dioxide can't be dissolved in the plasma because this requires very high partial pressures owing to this approximately 5% of carbon dioxide entering the blood is transported in solution form while majority of carbon dioxide diffuses into the erythrocytes where it undergoes various chemical reactions and is transported so i have discussed that even though carbon dioxide is more soluble in blood plasma than oxygen but it is only 5% transported in solution form carbon dioxide is transported from plasma to rbc in red blood cells or rbcs carbon this carbon dioxide combines with water that is already present in the red blood cell so the combination of carbon dioxide and water gives us the product which is carbonic acid and this carbonic acid is produced under the influence of an enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase the presence of carbonic anhydrase increases the hydrogen of uh, hydration of carbon dioxide several folds several hundred folds this carbonic acid then dissociates into a proton and bicarbonate ion it is a reversible reaction and this reversible reaction keeps on moving to the right because hydrogen ion or proton is buffered by hemoglobin as the concentration of protons increases in the red blood cells this causes decrease in ph or acidic ph in the rbc so these protons will bind to the amino acids in the globulin chain of hemoglobin and will decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen and this process will help in the delivery of more oxygen to the tissues that are producing more carbon dioxide metabolically and this whole process is known as bohr's effect so i am repeating this again combination of carbon dioxide and water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme gives us carbonic acid this carbonic acid undergoes a reversible reaction and dissociates into a proton and bicarbonate ion when this reaction goes on the concentration of a proton or hydrogen ion in the red blood cell increases and this decreases the ph of the red blood cell and the ph of red blood cell becomes acidic to counter this effect this hydrogen ion or proton is buffered by hemoglobin molecule so the proton will bind to the amino acid in the globulin chain of hemoglobin and will decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for carrying oxygen because the space where oxygen were to bind uh, that space is now occupied by hydrogen ion or proton and in this way the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen has been reduced and this process will help in the delivery of more oxygen or transport of ox more oxygen to the tissues 
those tissues that are deficient in oxygen and are producing more carbon dioxide met metabolically because we have seen that uh, the tissues are, uh, undergo a metabolic process during which they utilize oxygen and produce carbon dioxide in this process they become oxygen deficient and they need more and more oxygen so this bohos effect helps to provide more oxygen to the metabolizing tissues and at the same time these tissues are producing carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide diffuses into the red blood cell when protons will continue to bind with the hemoglobin chain of hemoglobin there occurs an increase in the concentration of bicarbonate ions in the red blood cells than that of the interstitial fluid so bicarbonate ions will move out through a special protein called protein band 3 which is present in the membrane of red blood cells so it is a, a type of transporter which is known as protein band 3 Due to the movement of bicarbonate ions from the red blood cell to the interstitial fluid, there is a risk of development of positive charge in RBC due to the retaining of protons. So to prevent this, the protein which is protein band 3, the transporter, which threw bicarbonate ion out, also causes the entry of chloride in the cell. So we can also say it the, like uh, bicarbonate chloride co-transporter. When chloride enters through the protein band 3, it also follows water. So, ex bicarbonate ions will be ex will exit through the red blood cell, and their their uh, their movement will cause uh, water and chloride to enter the cell. So, in this way, charges are maintained due to this bicarbonate chloride shift. So, 90% of carbon dioxide moves out in the lungs in the form of bicarbonate ions and this is the second route of carbon dioxide transport. So, up till now we have discussed two routes of transport of carbon dioxide. One is the dissolution of carbon dioxide within the blood plasma and this is only 5% transport of carbon dioxide. The other route is the uh, carbon other route of carbon dioxide transport is in the form of bicarbonate ions and it is 90% transport. The third form in which carbon dioxide is transported is carbamino compound. These carbamino compounds are formed by coupling of carbon dioxide to the amino group of proteins, particularly hemoglobin. Although carbamino compounds account for only 15-20% to 20 of total carbon dioxide content of the blood, they are responsible for 20-30% to 30 of carbon dioxide exchange between the tissues and the lungs. So all these processes are occurring in the blood present in the capillaries above the tissues and this blood will then be drained into the venous system and that venous system uh, will then uh, cause the transport of these substances uh, to the alveoli of the lungs. When this blood will reach the alveoli, we know there is lesser partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli than in the capillaries. Due to this, carbon dioxide from blood will continue to diffuse into the alveoli. And firstly, the carbon dioxide that is dissolved in the plasma will diffuse into the alveoli. When the carbon dioxide dissolved in the plasma will continue to diffuse into the alveoli, there occurs a decrease in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood. So carbon dioxide that is joined with hemoglobin in the form of carbamino hemoglobin will dissociate itself from the carbamino hemoglobin and this dissociated carbon dioxide will also continue to diffuse out of the RBC into the alveoli. Due to this diffusion of carbon dioxide out of the blood there occurs more deficiency of carbon dioxide in the RBC. So now protons will also detach from the hemoglobin molecule and will combine with bicarbonate ion which is present in little amount in the RBC in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme in the reverse direction. Only a very small amount of bicarbonate ions will be retained in the red blood cells. So what's going on that protons will detach themselves from the hemoglobin molecule and will combine with the small amount of bicarbonate ions which are already present in the RBC and this, their reaction will be catalyzed by the enzyme can carbonic anhydrase and we know that carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction reversibly so now it will ca catalyze this reaction in the reverse direction 
सो दिस रिवर्स रिएक्शन विल फर्स्ट प्रोड्यूस कार्बोनिक एसिड एंड देन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड वाटर एंड इट इज दिस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड दैट डिफ्यूज आउट ऑफ द रेड ब्लड सेल्स इन टू द एलवीलाई As protons will continue to uh, combine with bicarbonate ions, the concentration of bicarbonate ion within the RBC will become low. Therefore, bicarbonate ions present in the plasma will move into the RBC through band three protein, with chlorine moving out. As we have discussed that we can say that we can say band protein uh, band three protein to be a bicarbonate chloride co-transporter. So uh, when it uh, it causes the entry of bicarbonate ions in the surf, uh, in the red blood cell, it will also autom it will uh, automatically cause the uh, release of calcium ions from the red blood cell to the to outside of the cell. these more of the bar, more bicarbonate ions which are coming through uh, band 3 protein will continue to bind with the protein which is detaching from hemoglobin and their combination will continue to produce carbonic anhydrase uh, can carbonic acid and that carbonic acid will continue to dissociate into water and carbon dioxide in the presence of carbonic anhydrase and this reverse reaction will continue and this carbon di the carbon dioxide which will be produced by this reaction will continue to diffuse out of the rbc into the alveoli in this way hemoglobin molecule will become free from protons and uh, it has nothing to attach with it and finally when all of the carbon dioxide will diffuse into the alveoli oxygen will diffuse from alveoli into the rbc due to its high partial pressure in the alveoli some of the protons which which were bound to the hemoglobin molecule will also be forced to detach to be detached from the surface of hemoglobin by this coming oxygen and this oxygen will also continue to help remove protons bound bound to the globin molecule of the hemoglobin molecule and oxygen will itself bind with the hemoglobin molecule so this both process these all processes are occurring simultaneously that when carbon dioxide is moving out sim uh, simultaneously oxygen comes in this oxygen also causes dissociation of protons or hydrogen ions bound to the surface of hemoglobin and that uh, protons that are bound with the uh, that are being detached from the hemoglobin continue to bind with the bicarbonate and produce carbon dioxide and more and then more of the carbon dioxide will continue to be released from the cell out of out of the blood to the alveoli so first of all uh, 5% of carbon dioxide that was dissolved in the blood plasma first firstly is it it diffused out of the cell then the carbon dioxide that was in the form of carbon you no know, hemoglobin that uh, continued to diffuse out of the cell after this the small amount of bicarbonate ions that were present in the red blood cell caused the dissociation of proton from hemoglobin and they caused the reverse reaction in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme and produced carbon dioxide and water and that carbon dioxide also uh, continued to to be diffused out of the cell due to this release of carbon dioxide out of the cell there occurred a decrease in the concentration of carbon dioxide within the within the cell and uh, uh, also decrease in concentration of oxygen so more of oxygen from alveoli continued to diffuse within the cell its diffusion caused dissociation of hydrogen ions or protons that were bound to the hemoglobin molecule and at the same time bicarbonate ions continued to diffuse to move into the cell through protein 3 protein 3 band so this bicarbonate ion which is uh, moving into the cell through protein band 3 uh, will continue to bind uh, with the proton that are being released by the action of oxygen uh, and their reaction will cause the production of water and carbon dioxide and in this way carbon dioxide will continue to move out of the red blood cell into the alveoli and more of of the oxygen will continue to diffuse from the alveoli into the blood